Hello everybody. Let's take a look at the idea of lines and linear growth in this uh, this video. Lines and linear growth. Um, the first thing I want to do though is contrast the difference between linear and exponential growth. This video is going to primarily focus on linear growth. The next one we look at will be exponential growth. But you should be able to look at the situation and determine if it's linear growth or exponential growth. For example, it's raining outside and the weatherman said it's going to rain a half inch per hour. A half inch per hour is an example of linear growth because every hour it goes up by the same amount. It goes up exactly by a half inch. All right, so that would be an example of linear growth. And again, linear growth goes up by the same amount each time. Exponential growth, an example of exponential growth is, you know, if you look at studies about the United States population, it's, ex it's expected to rise by 1.7 percent every year. I really don't know if that's right. I just kind of made that up, but 1.7 percent every year. That would be an example of exponential growth because even though it's the same percentage, it's a different amount. All right, so it's a different amount. So if you look at the population of the United States here, it's 320 million right now approximately. So if it's supposed to go up by 1.7 percent, the first year it's going to go up by um, 5,440,000. 5, because that would be the first year. So first year growth. Of course, if you add that to the 320 million that's already there, the new the new population after one year at this growth is 325 million 440 thousand. Okay, so this is that 1.7 percent growth. So now, if you take another 1.7 percent of that, and all I'm doing is I'm taking that number multiplying by 0.017, you know, 1.7 percent. Check this out. It is now going to go up by 5,532,480. You see how it went up by a different amount? That's exponential growth. It goes up by the same percentage every year, not by the same amount. Big difference, big difference. So now this new population is after year two, the population is going to be 3 million, or I'm sorry, let me write it down here. Uh, the population is going to be 330,972,480. Okay, so if I just do one more year, so this is year two growth. If I multiply by 1.017 again, it's going to be 5,626,532.16. Notice a totally different number. So notice even though it goes up by the percent, same percent every year, the amount that actually goes up by every year differs. It goes up. All right. So that's exponential growth. So linear growth goes up by the same amount, half hour, half uh, inch every hour, same amount. Exponential growth goes up by the same percentage every year. So linear, same amount every year or per unit of time. Exponential, same percentage per unit of time. And it can either go up or down. We're typically talking about growth, but it can either go up or down. Um, when you send something in the mail, let me just erase this now. I got it here. When you send a package in the mail, you're charged, you know, initial fee um, plus, you know, two dollars for every pound over a certain amount. So it goes up by two dollars for every pound. So every pound it goes up the same amount, two dollars. That is an example of linear growth. So sending package in the mail. Definitely an example of linear growth because it goes up by the same amount. So if you have a five pound package and if, you know, they'll send it for a flat fee of say four dollars for up to, you know, three pounds and then every pound afterwards let's just say it costs a dollar for each additional 
pound. Okay, so what would be the total? So if I'm if I'm sending something that's five pounds, so it'd be four dollars for the first three pounds, so that's for three pounds. Then for each additional pound, it goes up by one. So this is for the fourth pound, and that's for the fifth pound. But you see how it goes up by the same amount each time? That is an example of linear growth. So when it goes up by the same amount each time, it's linear growth. When it goes up by the same percentage each, each time, it's exponential growth. So part of your questions that you'll have is determining, they'll give you a situation say, oh, is this exponential growth or is this linear growth? And you have to figure it out. Let's just try a, another example here. I'm just going to go to another page here because this is getting a little messy here. Um, suppose you get you get out of school and you get offered a job at forty thousand per year. Pretty nice job. And your boss gives you two options. He says you can either have a eighteen hundred dollar raise per year until you retire or a 4% raise. Every year until you retire. Which would you take? Would you take the 1800 every year or would you take the 4% raise every year? This right here is an example of linear because it's going up by the same amount, 1800 every year. This is, here is an example of exponential because it's going up by the same percentage every year. What I want to do is I just want to graph this scenario and help us figure this out on Excel. So I'm going to pull up Excel. Um, this is something we're going to use in this chap, this unit and next unit. And your final will have questions on Excel on it. So you'll be expected to be able to, to use Excel, use some of the basic features of Excel. I sent an email out and I wrote a note to send it again. If you are a student at Western Piedmont Community College, which you are, if you're in this class, you have access to free Microsoft Office. All right. And I sent an email out at the beginning of the semester. And let me see if I can track that down again. And I will send another email out um, about how to download it. Um, it's part of that um, email system that we use that gives students and us um, free access to Microsoft Office, which is really nice, um, which is really a good benefit of the email system, a really good benefit. So let me pull up Excel here. Okay, let me click on Excel here, and it's going to pop up here. And I'm just going to show you some formatting on this. Let's just ignore this. I'm not too sure what this is. I need to get it fixed. Let me maximize that screen. So I don't know if you've ever used Excel or not before. It's pretty. It's pretty handy program. You do a lot of different things on it, and we're gonna we're gonna compare these two situations: a eighteen hundred dollar per year raise or a four percent raise, and we're gonna figure out what it is for thirty or forty years. Um, we'll figure out how much it goes up by. I'll show you well, how one's linear, one's exponential. We'll actually do a quick graph of it so you can actually see visually see the difference between a linear and exponential graph. Okay, so I'm just going to click on the cell here. So I encourage you, if you're, if you're when you're watching this, pull up Excel um, and, and try to go along with this. Um, I'm going to start with a column for the year. I'm going to start a column with the starting salary. And I'm going to start, have a column with um, raise. And you see how this starting salary kind of um, spilled over to the next column. You can do a couple things. You can go up here and make it bigger, which is fine. That's one thing you can do. Or if you didn't want to do that, you can actually go ahead and hit this wrap text button and it just does that to it. I'll probably do both. Okay, so I'm going to start with year zero. So I'm typing in zero. Clicking on that cell, my starting salary is 40000 And I know my raise will do the first situation uh, of um, 1800 per year. So my raise is always going to be 1800 in this case. Okay. So this next year, I'm just going to fill this down, um, keep on filling this chart down, but there's a quick way of doing it. This next year is going to be year one. 
Okay, so year zero is your really is your start. So year one. So instead of putting a one in here, this is this is the beauty of Excel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in equals. It equals this last year plus one. I'm going to hit enter. All right. So I'm going to tell you what I did again. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to say that it, it's equal to this last year. So I'm going to actually click on the last year. Make sure you put equals in first. Click on the last year and then plus one. And then there, and it automatically puts that one in. And I know you're saying, well, that's a lot harder than just putting the one in, but you'll see in a second why it's going to be quicker. Okay. So the starting salary is going to equal, whenever you have to do a, a numeric calculation, you always put equals. And also I clicked on the cell that I'm going to put the, the salary at, the salary after year one. Um, it's going to equal my old salary, so I'm going to click on that, plus my raise, so I'm going to click on that cell. And that's the 41800 which it should be. You know what? I need to just make that salary, not starting salary. There we go. Of course, my raise is always eighteen hundred. Always eighteen hundred. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put equals, and I'm going to click on that cell eighteen hundred. It's always that. Let me show you this one more time, one more row. Then we can actually do something. It's like snapping our fingers, and it's going to fill everything in. So next year is going to be year two, so I can hit equals. It's the old year, so I'm going to click on that cell, plus one, year two. The new salary in year two, I'm going to hit equals because I'm doing the calculation, is the old salary, the 41800 So I'm going to click on that, plus the raise. I'm going to click on the raise, hit enter. And then this is still 1800 so I'm going to hit equals. I'm going to click on the last 1800 Now. Check this out. The computer recognizes the pattern that we're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here and do, I'm going to start on where this says two. I'm going to highlight to my right two rows. I'm going to go down a ways. I'm going to try to do 30, 35 years, whatever it might turn out to be. I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit Control D at the same time on my keyboard. So Control D and notice it fills it in automatically for you. And let me just go down to 35 years. I'm going to go down to 35 years. So that control D. Okay, so that's the beauty of Excel. You format a couple lines, a couple rows, and the computer picks up on it and knows exactly what you want. So at the end of 35 years, I'm going to be making 103000 at this $1,800 raise a year. That's not bad. It's not bad. Now to graph this, and how I get that, I just look down here at the last row. So after 35 years, I'm making 103,000. Okay, so I want to graph this. I'm going to graph the year and the salary. So I'm just going to highlight those two rows or columns. I'm going to go up to Insert, and I'm going to do a scatter plot. And I'm going to hit scatter plot, and I'm going to do the first one. And notice it pops up there. And that is my graph of this. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger for us to look at. Okay, so that's my graph of this example of starting at 40,000. So you can see the first dot here is 40,000. And each successive one goes up by 1,800. So you can see the raise here is always the same amount. And that's what we said linear growth was. It always goes up by the same amount each year. Now, what do those, if you look at the graph, all those points there, what shape does that graph make? It makes a line. That's why it's called linear growth. Linear makes a line. Okay. Now, let me go. And there, there's a lot of, on Excel I'm going to show you. I'm not going to show it to you all at once, all right, because it, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Let me go down and do the example where it's a, what did I say, 4% raise every year. So I'm just going to go down to the bottom of the sheet. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do year. I'm going to do salary. And I'm going to do the raise. So I'm going to start year zero. My salary is going to be 40000 Notice I'm not putting any equals now because um, 
I'm not doing any calculations yet, but I'm going to now. My raise is 4%, so it's going to equal 4% of that number, so 4% times that 40,000, so I'm going to click on that cell. So my first year, I get a raise of 1,600, which is not quite the 1,800, is it? So now for year one, I'm going to hit equals. It's my old year zero. Click on that, plus one. My salary is going to equal my old salary of 40000 so click on that, plus my raise of 1600 Click on that. Now my new raise is going to equal, it's still 4%, 0.04 times my year one salary of 41600 so click on that. And notice I actually got, the first year I got a $1,600 raise, the second year I got a $1,664 raise. So it actually went up by $64. Bucks. Still not at the $1,800, but it, it, it's getting closer, obviously. Now, we've probably done all we need to do, because this computer is very smart. You tell it something once, it usually picks up on it. So I'm just going to do the Control D. I'm going to go down for 35 years. I'm going to see if I can guess where that's it. Control D. I'm at 33, so I need to go down two more. And just look at, at a couple things. Notice, let me get my pen out. Got to get my pen out here. Um, drawing tools, pen. Notice how much it goes up by every year, 1600, 1664, 1730, 1799. If you go down towards the end, 5600. 5,800, 6,000, 6,313. It does not go up by the same amount every year. It's still going up by that 4%, but it's not the same amount every year. That's why it's called exponential. It increases by the same percentage, but not the same amount every year. Clearly, instead of getting the measly 1,800 year raise at the end, I'd rather have that 6,300, clearly. And look at the final salary. The final salary is almost... 50% more, isn't it? Yeah. Exponential is the way you want to go. Okay. Let's just go ahead and do a graph of this. I want to show you what the graph looks like. Um, let me go back to my drawing tools, and let's just go ahead and erase all drawings. Let's go back to non the normal mode. Okay. So now I'm going to highlight the year and the salary, and I'm just going to go to Insert. I'm going to go over here to scatter, so insert, scatter, and do a scatter plot, and you can see automatically the difference between these two shapes. Exponential growth has this curve to it, this upward curve to it, and you can clearly see the upward curve, whereas linear growth is perfectly, this. it goes up by the same amount each time, that's why it's linear. It looks like a line where this is an exponential growth, so you can see the exponential growth to it. You can see it's curving upward, which is good, because you want to be on this steep slope, especially when it's talking about things like salary. Okay, so just to highlight again the difference between linear and exponential, linear goes up by the same amount every time, so you can see in this example, the first one, it went up by 1,800 every time, and when we graph the actual salaries um, for the year, you can see it, it's perfectly linear. makes a line. Lines are perfectly straight, whereas exponential growth is going up by the same percentage every time, but it's definitely not the same amount every time, because at the beginning, you're only making 1,600, 1,664 raises, but here at the end, it's like $4,000, $5,000 raises. Look at this curve. It has a nice exponential growth, upward curve to it. So definitely a big difference between exponential and linear growth, and part of this is to be able to recognize which is exponential, which is linear. Okay, so a formula for these linear functions, again, that's what we're really focusing on in this video are linear functions. You know, we talked about the difference between linear and exponential. We're really going to hammer on the linear functions in this video. Next video, talk about the exponential. All right, so a, a formula for this linear function is y is equal to the growth rate x times the initial value. So the growth rate, how much it goes up by every year, also known as the average growth rate that you've talked about in the previous video in the previous section, so it's the same exact thing. I told you that you see some things over again, plus the initial value is the starting point. Some of you may think, well, oh, I remember back is y equals mx plus b. Exactly. B is your initial value, 
m is your slope or your growth rate. It's the same thing, it's just a different twist on it, alright, so it's the same exact thing. So, just to look at a couple examples of this, if we go back to that problem that we just did, if you start, you know, starting salary, of 40,000 and we get an $1,800 raise every year. Look at that one. Can't look at the other one because it's exponential so it's a different formula for exponential but so my starting salary is 40000 and an $1,800 raise every year so this 40000 would be my initial value. All right. And this $1,800 raise every year is how much it goes up by. That's my growth rate. So if I wanted to come up with a formula for this, it would just be, I'm trying to keep that um, in the window here, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. So it's going to be Y is equal. Let me just type this. Here's the general formula again, the growth rate. X plus your initial value. So my growth rate is 1800 X plus my initial value of 40,000. All right, so that would be an equation um, representing this linear situation. All right, so this equation where X is equal to the number of years and y is equal to the salary. Sometimes they'll switch the variables on us and we may look at one like that too. You just have to be careful with that. So if I say, you know, what is the salary? After, you know, 15 years, you say, well, let me use this form here. So y equals 1800 X plus 40,000. Say, well, X is the number of years, which is 15. So I'm going to plug out 15 right for X, and it's going to give me my Y, which is my salary, which is exactly what it wants, because it's asking for the salary. So it's asking for my Y after 15 years, which is my X. So you're going to do this. You're going to say, well, Y is equal to 1,800 times 15 plus 40,000. And if you run that through your calculator, you get a salary of 67000 Not bad. Not bad. But you know what? If I go back to this Excel spreadsheet, make sure I'm looking under the right one, linear, it should give me right there. That cell right there, 67000 It's the same thing as what this linear, as, as what this Excel spreadsheet did. All right. Make sure that you're familiar with this linear model. We'll do another example of it, but make sure you're familiar with that linear model and you can write equations when given a particular linear growth example. And in this case, this particular value here, you know, if we look at this model right here, that value, the 1800, the slope, if you will, or the average rate of change, or the average growth rate, or the growth rate, also known as a slope, that's how much my salary or this person's salary goes up every year. So every year, this salary goes up by $1,800. There's a part of the book here when you're reading it, it talks about the slope, which is the same as the growth rate. I know I got a couple emails and say, well, this looks like slope, but I don't know what my X's and Y's are. But that's the beauty of this class. We're getting rid, rid of the X's and Y's and trying to get rid of the algebra and thinking things in more of context of problems, all right? But it's the same thing. It really is the same thing. Okay, let's look at another, another problem here that you should be able to see up on your screen. It says the meaning of marginal tax rate. It talks about taxes, and yes, taxes are an example of linear function. It's a bad thing, but with April 15th coming around the corner, I thought, well, let's just do an example on taxes here. So it says, meaning a marginal tax rate. It says, recall from the discussion on page 139, and that may be different depending on what version of the text you're using, so that really doesn't matter in this problem, that the marginal tax rate is an additional tax you expect to pay for each additional dollar of taxable income. Okay, so the marginal tax rate is usually expressed as a percentage 
in the example, the marginal tax rate was up 15%. Does that mean your total tax is 15% of your taxable income? Specifically, if your taxable income was 41300 is your total tax 15% of that? Uh, it's not. And we'll, by the example that we'll, we'll be able to see here, it's not. Um, uh, it just doesn't work like that. You play; it's actually a higher tax, and you get in that bracket. Then, when you're when you're within that, um, it's it'll be that 15 percent or whatever it may be. And we'll see by this example, we're going to do what we're talking about. It says the following table shows a single taxpayer for uh, the federal income tax owed for the given level of taxable income. Both are measured in dollars. And I hopefully we'll be blessed enough to be worried about making this kind of money, um, ninety-seven thousand. Um, but hopefully we will. We'll see. Okay. Let me let me ask you a couple questions here. First question is: um, Is this a linear function? So is this a linear function? Okay, I just realized I pushed stop recording sometime through this problem, so I'm just going to do this whole problem over again. So if you, I apologize for that. If you, if you, um, if I repeat anything, just go ahead and fast forward it. Okay, so I'm looking at this marginal tax rate number 34 uh, from the text we're in now, but if it's in a different text, that's why I just copied this out because it doesn't matter what text it's in or not. It says, recall from the discussion from page 139 that the marginal tax rate is an additional tax you expect to pay for each additional dollar of taxable income. The marginal tax rate is usually expressed as a percentage. For example, the marginal tax rate was 15%. Does that mean that your total tax is 15% of your taxable income? And it doesn't, and we'll see an example that we're doing. Specifically, if your taxable income is 41300 is your total tax 15% of that? And it doesn't. Again, that's what we'll see from that example we're going to do here. It says, the following table shows a single for a single taxpayer in the federal income tax owed for a given level of taxable income. Both are measured in dollars. All right, so you can see here's my little tax table here. Back when I used to do my taxes, I used to look at these tax tables all the time. And it, in part, in the first question, it says, show that the range of taxable income shows uh, in the table the tax owed is a linear function of taxable income. So it goes up by the same amount. So if we look at this table, this is the taxable income. So if my taxable income is $97,000, I owe $21,913 in tax. If my taxable income is $97,050, I owe $21,927. That's how it works. If it's $97,200, I owe a taxable income of $21,969. Okay, so that's how this works. Now. To show it's a linear function, I have to show that it goes up by the same amount each time. So if you carefully inspect this, it looks like the taxable income from 97000 and 97050 goes up by 50. If I increase by another 50, I get to 9,700. Increase by another 50, I get to 150. Then the 200, the 250, the 300. So that looks okay. Now taxable owed from 20 or tax owed from 21,913 to 21,927 looks like it goes up 14 dollars. So for it to be linear, this has to be the same. So if I add another 14 to 27, I get 41. So that's good. Add another 14, I get 55. Add another 14, I get 69. Add another 14, I get 83, and then 97. So yeah, each time, 
Each time the taxable income, the real on top goes up by 50, the tax owed goes up by 14 bucks. All right. So for each $50 increase in taxable income, I own an additional 14 bucks. So yes, it is linear because it's going up by the same amount. Um, in 36, what tax do you owe if you have taxable income of 97,000? Well, right there it is, 21,913. Okay, so it's it's prepping me. It's asking me all these questions um, to actually build a linear equation for this. Uh, how much additional taxes do on each dollar of taxable income? So how much additional taxes do? So what it's asking me, how much for each additional dollar of taxable income, how much more in taxes do I have to pay? It's asking me for the slope or for the growth rate. And since it's a linear function, we just figured that out and then in the 35 question that it goes up by the same amount each time, I'm going to look at two particular values, 97,000, if my taxable income was 97000 the tax owed was 21913 And then if its taxable income was 97050 the tax owed was 21927 um, And I think that should be 913 Okay, so, and again, in this question, how much additional taxes do on each dollar? So on each dollar. Again, it's asking for the slope. So for each dollar increase, how much additional taxes do? Well, we know the taxes went up by $14. If I go ahead and subtract how much it went up by, I'm going to get $14. Right? That's what we just got done saying. It goes up $14 each time. Now, per taxable income, if I subtract the taxable income, I get my 50. And that's what we got before. Remember, that's what we got here. My $14, and then there's my 50. Okay, so we got that before. We're just kind of verifying it again, I guess. Let's see if I can get this out of the way. So if you actually divide that out, you get 0.28. So my marginal rate would be 0.28 or 28%. Now thinking back, so what does this mean? So for each for each additional dollar increase in taxable income, this person owes, or I should say the taxable or the taxes owed increases by 0.28. So 28, 28 cents. So for each dollar you make past $97,000, you owe 28, 28 cents in tax, or 28%, because 28 cents out of a dollar is 28%, right? Dollar is 100 cents, so 28 cents out of 100 cents is 28 cents, yeah. But that's not my marginal tax rate. Remember the initial verbiage up here? It says, uh, let me just erase some of this. It's getting a little messy here. So remember, initially it was talking about, you know, does that mean your total tax is 15% of your taxable income? No. So in this case, it'd be 28% now. Because if we just look at this, you know, and if I just take those two numbers, if I take the 21,913 and divide it by the 97,000, I don't get 28%. I get like... I think it's like 22% or, yeah, 22.6%. Yeah. So that doesn't mean that. It means after that threshold, after you make that $97,000, then your taxable rate is your marginal, what they call the marginal tax rate is 28%. Okay. 
This last question here, it says, let A denote the amount in dollars of your taxable income in excess of 97000 So the taxable income is A. In excess of 97000 and T, the tax dollars you owe. So this is going to be by T. So it's asking us to change some values, some variables around here. Find a linear form of 6 that gives the terms, that gives T in terms of A. Okay, so so linear formula, line, I'm just going to minimize this. This is what it's asking us for. It's asking for, you know, we know that our line is our Y is equal to our growth rate times X plus your initial value. Now, and it's asking us to do a couple things. First off, it says let's don't use Y's and X's. Let's use A's and T's. So if I go back to this problem, my tax owed is my T. Usually the first column is your X's, the second column is your Y's. So my tax owed is going to be my T. So this is going to be T is equal to the growth rate times your X was your A plus your initial value. Oops. And another way to think of that is, you know, your X is your independent variable, all right? Your independent variable is your taxable income. And your dependent variable, what, that, what depends on that is your taxable amount. So your taxable amount, T, is your dependent variable. It depends on what your actual taxable income is, all right? So that's, that's another way you can think of it. So, my growth rate, we just figured it out. In fact, it's right here, 0.28. So, it's going to be T is equal to 0.28A. So, 0.28 for every additional dollar past the $97,000, because we're in this particular tax bracket. So, every dollar past the $97,000, I pay an additional $0.28. Cents in taxes for every dollar. Plus my initial value, this chart started out with a taxable, with taxes in the amount of 21,913 taxes owed. So that's going to be my initial value, my starting point. So it's going to be 21,913. And that is my um, linear formula that gives T in terms of A. Yep, so it gives my taxes owed in terms of my taxable income. So remember, your A is for income over $97,000. All right, so for income more than $97,000. So if I just wanted to check this to make sure I did it right, which is always a good thing, always a good thing. Let me erase this again. And I said, well, Suppose, let me erase this chart. I'm going to check it with this chart that we're given. I'm going to say, well, suppose we have a taxable income of $97,000 and $150,000. $97,150. Okay, so if I plug that in here and I figure out what my taxes are, so T is equal to 0.28. So again, if my taxable income is 97,150, okay? So be careful. What you actually plug in for A is not the 97,150 because remember, A denotes the amount in dollars of your taxable income. I'm reading from 38. So it denotes denote the amount of dollars of your taxable income in excess of $97,000. So in excess of $97,000, would just be the 150. So you plug in 150 here plus the 21,913. And if you run that through your calculator, you get $42 for the additional taxes that you owe plus the initial tax amount of 21,913 for the um, for the tax rate of $97,000. And if you add that up, you get 21955 
So if we take a sneak peek back at this, um, right there it is, 21,955. So we did do it right. We checked it and it did verify. Okay, so in this video, we talked about a couple things. We talked about the difference between linear growth and exponential growth. We did um, examples comparing the two. We looked at Excel. We're going to start using Excel more and more, so we'll get used to Excel. There was there would be an expectation that you'll be able to do Excel on your final, so keep that in mind. Some of your labs that you will get will have an Excel component to it. Okay, and I sent out an email earlier. I'll send it out again if I can track it down and find it. You all have access to free Microsoft Office. All students at Piedmont do, so there's no, you, you all have access to Excel, okay? Um, we looked at a couple of specific examples of linear growth and finding the equations using that form that y is equal to the growth rate times x plus the initial value. The growth rate is the same as the average growth rate we discussed in the previous video or the slope that we discussed you know, that, that everybody seems to be familiar with slope. We looked at a couple examples of that, find that actual equation, showing how something's linear, goes up by the same amount each time. Um, looked at a good tax, tax example, real-life tax example, because hopefully it's real for us that we'll all be making that much money. But, you know, that's how taxes work. A lot of people get that fused, confused. If you're in this tax bracket, you pay this amount of taxes, this percentage. And, it's after that threshold, like an example that we did, after that $97,000 threshold. Um, please let me know if you have any questions on this. Thank you very much.